First up on the Focus at 4, we've been watching those wildfires all across the state. The wildfire situation today has improved at least somewhat from yesterday. It has a lot of the big fires that we were seeing on Monday are now under control. Let's update you what was ha happening in Walker County, just north of Huntsville. That fire, we're being told now, 100% contained. You're looking at footage from yesterday. Firefighters say that that fire started after a tire on a trailer caught fire and then the hay that was being hauled on that trailer caught fire. There were 650 acres total that burned there in Walker County. Two trailer homes were destroyed, but nobody thankfully heard any of this, and only one of those two trailers were occupied. While we're talking about fires, we can also tell you that in Bastrop County, where the big fire was, some of the residents in Bastrop County that evacuated are now being allowed back into some of that area. We also had a big fire in Robertson mm -hmm. County yesterday. I was on the phone with Sheriff's Office earlier. They said that fire was contained overnight in Waller County. This is interesting. In Waller County, they say that the situation is so bad there that the deputies in Waller County are no longer issuing uh, warnings to those who violate the burn ban. Right. It's straight out citation. citation. They, they're done with the warnings, and uh, you're going to get cited if you violate the burn ban. As they should be, in my opinion. Totally, it's, totally understandable. It's time. Yeah. We have seen the effects of people uh, maybe not necessarily following those burn bans exactly, and what can happen with that tiniest little spark. Absolutely. So it's time to just hand out those citations because this is a problem. That and a big fire at Aggieland Tire Shop in Bryan, but that is now out. Firefighters were called back out to the tire shop overnight after that fire rekindled. Crews now working on trying to figure out what started it in the first place. Jason Ware, the assistant fire chief with Brazos County Precinct 3, tells us the building is just too dangerous right now for anyone to go inside. They're concerned it may collapse at any moment because of the very extensive damage there. He says it might be quite some time before they know what sparked that fire, if they're even able to figure it out at all ever. Along with the tires in the building, a couple of trucks and two motorcycles were destroyed in that fire. Gas prices going down again. Hard not to notice. Uh, it's a little bit easier on the wallet, but we know it has some other negative effects. Absolutely. This is great news for some. Those who work in the industry, this may not be some uh, good news to pass along. AAA reports a national average retail price for a gallon of regular unleaded gasoline is at $2.25 per gallon. That is the lowest it has been since early February. The average price in Bryan College Station, even much lower than that, $2.03. Lowest price in the area that we've seen is $1.86. So here's what's going on. Fall maintenance at United States refineries were keeping prices just a little bit higher than what they've been. But the maintenance is now over, so that's why we're starting to see the drop back down with prices. So now barring any unanticipated disruptions in supply, the national average could fall below the $2 per gallon threshold for the first time in years since 2009. I think so many want to cheer about that, but again, we live in Texas, especially in this area where so many could be negatively impacted by Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Well. It's, it's, it's tough to enjoy yeah, that low yeah, price yeah. at the pump. Early voting is underway. Texans are deciding on seven constitutional amendments. So all this week here on KBTX on the four o'clock show, we're breaking down each amendment that and, and what it means for you and your family when you go and vote on these things. So today we're going to be talking about amendment number two, which could change current law surrounding tax exemptions for spouses of disabled vets. So in 2011, Texas voters passed a constitutional amendment extending 100% property tax exemptions to surviving spouses of disabled veterans who have not remarried, but it did not include spouses of disabled veterans who died before January 1st of 2010. So here's what this would do. The amendment would expand current law to make those spouses eligible for the tax exemptions as long as they're not remarried. Tomorrow we're taking a look at amendment number three. These are the amendments to the state constitution. It's, you know, when you read the original language, it's, it's a little tough to break through it and to, and to figure out what it means. So we're just trying to break this down so you know what uh, you're voting on at the poll. And our news partners, the Texas Tribune, mm -hmm. we're actually relying on them a little bit to explain all of this. Go to their website, texastribune.org. They do a great job at this they kind sure of stuff do. as well. Yeah. All right, hey, this so next story. This next story, it's one of those <laughs> one of those caught on camera moments. It reminds us all how dangerous swimming can really be. Also one of those moments of someone being in the right place at the right time. The story takes us to Austin, Texas, where a boy was caught in fast moving water. Thankfully, paramedics were training nearby when this exact thing happened. Kylie McGyvern has more. Water is the most unpredictable environment that we have, and it, it can take your life in an instant. All cadets that enter into Austin Travis County EMS go through swift water awareness training. 
October 5th was a sobering reminder why. An instant is all it took Commander Craig Smith to react. The moment training turned to trouble. I just jumped. And this kid comes down and he falls off his tube immediately and goes down. And he comes up and when he came up, he was actually looking straight at us. He was clawing for, for air. In the edited video, you see the splash, the bob of a head. But Smith says it's what you won't hear that people need to keep in mind. It was very quiet. Exactly. And it, it isn't like it is in the movies at all. You know, that's an over-dramatization of it. People are screaming for help and this, that, and the other. When people are truly drowning and, and they're at that, that base instinct of survival, they don't have the energy to waste on yelling. This is a man who has seen a lot, dealing with disaster day in and day out. But this, I got you, I got you. this was different. Had somebody not been there, um, this kid would have likely drowned. That's the thing that's hard to, kind of hard to process and kind of hard to deal with. A reminder of the importance of training for utter chaos and quiet moments. Get out right here, but don't worry, I got it. In Austin, Kylie McGivern, KXAN News. The young man was not hurt and he was reunited with his parents. And thank goodness they're and now they're going to use those videos for new PSA warnings, which what could possibly be better, but indeed right place, right time. And, and what a quick save the right training as well. That's called a guardian angel right there. That is. All right. We're going to be back with that pumpkin fun and another look at the forecast rain moving in. We'll see you around the corner.